Right. So today, I'm taking uh, one of the Subaru Impreza ECUs, 9798 year. This is actually from a three door Type R STI. Uh, it's a 1998, um, pre September. So this is one of the last years for the ESL chip. And um, here I'll just undo the case and take the uh, and show you the board and show you the bits that have come in the package and uh, how I'm going to install it. Some of the tools you need. Right, so I'll take this last screw out and put that in the pot. And let's take this off. A bit trickier one end, but there we go. So there we've got the board. Now, I've already opened this up and I've marked up basically where you have to install these strips for the uh, daughter board to connect to or to sit into. And then uh, you need to use this screw here, this riser, uh, just here. You need to use that, take this screw out, put that in instead then put the daughter board on top and then put that screw back in to the top of this one. Okay, so if I take the uh, board out now, from the case. Okay, so now I've undone those screws, we can lift the board out. This is our board. This is a working board. Um, I know that this works because I've tested it and driven the car for some time with it in. It's only a couple of serial numbers different from the one that came with the car, which is still in the car. So it took me a while to find this ECU as close a match as possible. Um, so yeah, it works perfectly with the car. When I switch to either ECU, so I've got this one here to modify and the one to keep for standard, just in case. So now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> show you the bits that I've marked up. So basically here on the on the board, I put a black mark, which for a black pen, just to show the ones I don't want to desolder. Uh, here, all of these, none of these ones. These ones over here, these two there, this one, and the one at the end. And, and then these, you cut to size, and they're going to be soldered in, obviously the other way around, soldered in so they create uh, a seat for this uh, door board to sit into, to connect to the circuit on the board. And then um, it gets braced in that corner to keep it still. So I'll show you once I uh, start desoldering these holes with a desolderer. And then we've got to remove some resistors. So these four resistors here, see I've marked them as well. So they've got to come off. And then on the other side, so here, you can see that I've marked up this set. Basically, it's all of these resistors need to come off. And then, down here, these two right here, this, which has nothing on it at the moment, that needs to be shorted, and this resistor needs to be removed. And then the one up there needs to be left, and that one leaves unshorted, open. So I've got the board now uh, in this board holder, which means you can rotate it, turn it around, it's nice and solid, and uh, you're not gonna burn anything underneath when it gets hot. So here you can see I've just lined up the uh, array of pin, pin strip. And we've got uh, all of the ones across the front. And then we've got um, these 12 over here, I think it is, 10, eight in the end here. And this right at the back, which you can see if I line it up alongside it, is a little too long. So we're going to cut this one now to fit. So this one will come off. And we'll just put it on here. So what we're going to do is just remove that last pin to make up the correct amount we need for that last run. I've done the others there really. So that's that one cut to size. Now that will line up perfectly with our last set on the board. Let's have a look here. 
so you see, so yeah, that will line up to that last ray there. So they're all cut to size now, the strips. I just need to desolder the holes and then resolder all of these back in from the underside. Right, so just to show you what I'm doing here. I used the solder sucker for a bit, but it's uh, it's not great compared to uh, other techniques. Um, so this is how I'm doing it, uh, just so you can see. And this, once you get a flow going, it's pretty, pretty straightforward and it produces a nice, a nice clean hole. I've done this all the way along the others, <clears throat> so I'm onto like the last six is this. And this seems to expose the circuit board to the least amount of heat. The other good thing about doing it this way is it leaves a, a run of solder on the underside of the board that can be used on the new pins that you're installing. Look at me getting all shaky. It actually leaves quite a nice amount of solder on the hole. And that's it. So now you can see where I've done all the way across. So I'm able to see my first run in. Move this up and tilt this around so you can see it. So that's my first set of uh, pin strip. That's my cutage. I had to dremel in the middle of this join because uh, it didn't butt together. Even though uh, that was the uncut edge of two strips, it didn't butt together so I had to dremel it to make it sit true. That's nice and lined up now. So I can start soldering underneath once I've done the others. So as you can see now, uh, all those pin strips are in. And then if we tilt this round, you can see the solder in at the top. So I used the excess solder that was uh, sitting through the hole after the needle had gone through it. And it allowed me to attach most of the pins uh, all the way across and then after they'd cooled down I just went over them again with a fine bit of solder and just uh, dabbed them to make them nice good contacts and uh, now I'm going to do a continuity test on each pin to make sure it's working where it's supposed to go and then uh, carry on Trying to fit the uh, the board into the pins, I noticed that the left side over here, this array, seems to be not perfectly spaced with the, uh, the the riser pins or the pin strip that's on the daughter board. So it's like I've added some strips to this board, and uh, yeah, so I've added the same pins on the underside of their board and so it, um, it may be that just when that was installed it was a little bit off off alignment because I can't see how these could be aligned wrong because they only fit in the holes set um, so I can only imagine the board is just a little bit out of spec 
but I'm sure once it presses in, it will stay firm. But um, doesn't make it great for wanting to take it out again. But I guess once you've done most of this work, you won't be able to get to the original ECU work unless you put the resistors back on or about to take off. So yeah, still, I'm sure it'll work fine. All right, so now I've got to remove these four resistors here, which are, where's my finger? Yeah, those four need to come off. And I'm going to be using one of these soldering iron tweezers so I can heat it up and lift it off. Um, let's try, I'll try and show you one. It's, it's not easy to do with a phone, um, and I kind of use two hands to steady myself, but we'll have a go and let's see. There we go. Easy peasy. Alright, so all the resistors uh, on this side of the board are off. Where are we? Those four, those four, those three, these six, two, and another six there. And then over here, uh, we have to remove the 901, keep the 902, and short the 900 pins, which didn't have a resistor on it. And then 903, which is, this, which is mentioned. And that's it. So now this board is ready to have the daughter board uh, fixed down to it. Okay, right. So everything's ready now. To take the uh, board. So we've got our pins. And should be able to just slot these in. But... To be honest, it's not a perfect fit, so I think there's going to be a bit of careful alignment because this first set, I don't know if you can see that, there's a slight, you can't really see it, there is a slight difference in where these left what is it, 10, line up. So I think a bit of a persuasion, obviously gentle persuasion, but you can see there that the pins are trying to go in at a slight angle. So I'm gonna put the camera down, let's do this properly, two ends. Okay, all right, so that was pretty tricky, but it's in now, it's very solid. Nice and firm. No, no concern about that moving about. That's for sure. And with the screw in place, you can see I've had to use a pencil. It's a perfect fit of pencil, really, so that the back of the board doesn't flex when I was pressing down on it. And then to stop the case from moving, I just put set along those pliers under the corner, so that I'd have the firmness to press down on the pins with like six, seven fingers to spread the load. And uh, yeah, uh, it started to go in gradually and then all just flush, went in nice. It's probably a, a better design being like this because it's, it's fairly uh, rigid in there now, solid. So now I can take the pencil out and the screw is in and the riser bolt. So that is, that is pretty, pretty solid in there, there's no worry about that wiggling I'm giving this quite a bit of force to try and wiggle it but that is really quite solid <laughs> 